Welcome to Martini Time, the happy time of the day <laughs> here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. And I'll keep repeating that because all of my stories, my talks, are really an unfolding of that. It look, I, th I thought about this today. It looks like, I know, from those of you who are drop in, that uh, uh, I meander. <laughs> I've been accused of that. But I'm operating on a GPS navigator. Think about that. A GPS navigator operates differently from a flat map. When you're on your GPS and you type in your intention, no matter what turn you make, no matter what topic you talk about, no matter what story you tell, you're always going home to your intentional destination. This requires surrendering to the GPS, trusting it, knowing that it will not call you an idiot for making a wrong turn. It won't fault you for whatever you do, because you're always going home when you type in your intention on your GPS navigator of the heart. Think about that. So the topic of today's topic <laughs> is the silver cup of innocence. See, I've got, um, I'm going to show you here, I've got all these collection of stuff in here. Pick this one here. I've, there are other shelves here I don't want to show you. Here's my uncle down here. Uh, but today I ran across this cup. My wife polished it up. It's got my name on it, my initials, E E G C, Edwin Gus Conley, a little baby. And my mother bought him a silver cup. And when he got some teeth, he bit it. <laughs> but anyway, she saved it. It was all tarnished. So I found it today, among other things. And so my wife polished it up. And that's, wow, that's my silver cup of innocence. You know, I went to the um, dentist to pay a bill today, and there was a receptionist in there, and she, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Where have you been? And I smiled and said, well, I've been here in Blackstone. And we went on. She just talked how much glad she was to see me. And uh, when I left, I had no idea who she was. <laughs> so I have Blackstone Alzheimer's. I meet people who remember me. I'm in their memory book. I'm in their book of memories. And I, I, meet, I see them for the first time. I see them for the first time. Joseph, uh, not uh, T.S. Eliot said, at the end of We Explore, but at the end of our exploring, we'll come to where we began and see it for the first time. That's the silver cup of innocence. When you're innocent and drinking from the silver cup, everything is the first time. But then our landfill comes in and, and stuff be added and the bulldozer comes and piles it on. Then society piles it on and it's just landfill up land and down in the bottom of the landfill is this silver cup of innocence, you see. So what is our path? What are you going to type into your GPS navigator? I want to find my lost innocence. I want to go home to my lost, to my innocence, where I see everything for the first time. Where there's still, oh wow, I didn't see that, I didn't know, I didn't see that. And we ask questions, what does that mean? People come here and they go right by my shelf of, the, of my gods and goddesses. Nobody's interested. Nobody says, what is, the, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who? Nobody asks. They just go right by. Nobody's curious. They don't have the cup of innocence. They don't ask questions. They don't want to know, what is that? What is that? See, we don't find the, the great, this, also this is a symbol for the grail, the holy grail. I've been reading about that in uh, Creative Mythology by Joseph Campbell, who did an extensive study of the grail romances. 
and Percival, the Grail Knight, who found the Grail Castle and asked the right question and was given the and, and won the Grail that healed the wound that won't heal of the Fisher King. The wound that won't heal is the wound of our lost innocence buried beneath the landfill of the modern world and the known and memory and the past, you see. The older we get, the deeper the landfill of the past gets. And people come here with their photo albums and they're rummaging around in the landfill of their past, their images. Oh, I remember this and this was so nice and look how young they were. <laughs> they don't have their cup of innocence, you see. They lost it. It's buried somewhere. And they look in the past and the, oh, as we age, the eyes turn back to the past. When we're young, they're to the future. And as we pass the middle mark, the eyes turn to the past. And we succumb to old age, sickness, and death, which the Buddha saw when he left his pleasure palace and said, what is that? What is old age, sickness, and death? And then he saw a monk, a monastic, a renunciate. And his valet said, who, I, the, uh, Buddha, who is that? And he had a little bowl, the monk, and his head was shaved. And the valet said, well, he's a monk, and he wants to find the answer to the first three questions, old age, sickness, and death. He wants liberation from old age, sickness, and death. And right then, snap, the Buddha typed into his GPS navigator, I want to find my lost innocence. Take me home. And so he began his path of renou he renounced the pleasure palace, gave his robes, horse to his valet, left his child and wife, took off to the forest. Now don't say, oh, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> this is mythology. You say, oh, Jesus shouldn't have gone to the cross. But anyway. <laughs> So anyway, he typed in his heartfelt goal and followed it. Just like when Percival, the knight, the grail knight, set out from, when, see the story of King Arthur was, they were all sitting around the round table and it was the custom that they would have a vision or a quest and a, and a hologram of the Holy Grail appeared over the table of the, of the round table and went, oh, oh, and they all struck with wonder. And they said, that is our quest. We're all going to set off and we're all going to set out and find the Holy Grail. So each went into the forest where no one else had traveled. There was no path to the Holy Grail. There was a pathless path. There's no path to your silver cup of innocence. So they set out. And Percival, the one who achieved the Holy Grail, because he was innocent of heart, dropped the reins to his horse and let the horse lead the way. In other words, he typed in where he wanted to go, Holy Grail, into his GPS navigator, which was his nature, his heart, his heartfelt nature, which is the horse is a metaphor, and he let his heart lead the way, not his mind, because the mind can only function in the landfill of the known. You see, if you ask the mind to go find your lost innocence, it's going to rummage around in the landfill and find somebody else's cup. Oh, I found it. <laughs> found a cup somebody threw away. But it won't be your cup, because nobody's thrown it away. It's not in the landfill of memory, you see. It's antecedent to your adult world. It's the living heart of oh, the child that Jesus says can't get in. Unless you get like a child, you can't get into, the, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. 
Well, you got to find your silver cup of innocence. That's what you got to do. But you got to type it into your GPS navigator of the heart. You're not going to find it on a flat map where everything is known. You need a map to the unknown. You need a map, a map beyond the flat world, beyond the earth, beyond the known. There are no maps there. But you have to be a grail knight. You have to hear the call to adventure and let your heart lead the way. Thanks for dropping in. I'll see you in the morning at Buddha's in your landfill, which is what I'm talking about now, or Buddha's are plain and simple. Share this on Facebook or go to my YouTube, Ed Conley at YouTube, and you can subscribe. All my talks are there, my meandering stream of talks. Who knows where they will lead us? Thanks for dropping in.